Benjamin Grant, a city planner from San Francisco, describes gentrification in a PBS article on June 17, 2003, as a term for the arrival of wealthier people in an existing urban district, a related increase in rents and property values, and changes in the district's character and culture. The term suggests a displacement of the lower class, leaving many without homes, and a struggle for justice. Lincoln Heights is a culturally rich neighborhood located on the east side of Los Angeles. According to census data accessed by the LA Times from 2009, Lincoln Heights is considered a low-income neighborhood with 70% of its population being Latino and 25% Asian. While Lincoln Heights doesn't look like the poster child for gentrification yet, fears have risen up of the neighborhood taking the same path as Echo Park, Silver Lake, and its close neighbor Highland Park. Jan Lin, a sociology professor at Occidental College, writes in an article on June 4, 2015 for KCET, Northeast Los Angeles is a good illustration of the stage model of gentrification, where home buyer pioneers, artists, and neighborhood activists who contribute to the neighborhood preservation and revitalization of the built environment and urban culture are subsequently threatened with displacement by speculator investors and more affluent gentrifiers. It's almost as if citizens are being discouraged to fight against gentrification. According to Gia Rule, a writer for the UCLA newsroom on June 17, 2015, Diana Cuff, a professor of urban design, noted that there are two issues that come with gentrification, housing affordability and neighborhood character. People who own property in a neighborhood that's gentrifying always think the change is fantastic, while those who are renting or looking for new housing think that it's terrible. It is also important to note how gentrification takes away affordable facilities and services for residents of low-income neighborhoods, such as local laundromats, markets, and restaurants, and replaces it with services more directed towards tourists and wealthier people who can afford them. An example of this would be the opening of the Heights Deli and Bottle Shop on North Broadway in Lincoln Heights. The shop took over what used to be a bigger extension of Tacos Chapalita next door, which used to serve Rostasier chicken and is now a shop that sells foreign brews and takeaway deli. Valentina Silva, a writer for LA Magazine on April 17, 2015, describes the shop in an article on the magazine's website as standing out next to all the other local shops. She also discussed how the opening of the shop triggered fears of gentrification. The owner of the shop states how this business is meant to serve a broader demographic. Some residents were upset because it took away a source of affordable food, where $17 could get you two entire chickens with two large sides that could feed the entire family, while at the New Delhi, the same amount of money could get you about two individual sandwiches. Lincoln Heights is slowly becoming the next victim of gentrification. The fears of gentrification of the citizens are valid. Across the neighborhood, apartments are being put up for rent. Empty lots have become the battleground for developers. Businesses are being shut down, and houses are being left empty. In order to find out more about how the community is fighting back, I met up with Maga, who is a part of the group Defend Bull Heights and hosts a radio show called Puentes y Fuentes that discusses gentrification. So Defend Bull Heights is committed to um, fighting gentrification and its root causes, which we understand to be capitalism, colonialism, and white supremacy. And the main way that we see ourselves doing that is by building community power um, that can actually challenge like institutions and individuals that are trying to carry out gentrification. I'm now interested in kind of like like taking the leadership of the people who um, have the most to lose mm -hmm. in gentrification. So part of what that means is like supporting um, tenants right now, for example, at the Hollis building. Holland's building on Holland's and Whittier that are threatened to be displaced all because this new landlord that just bought the building thinks that he can um, make a lot more money by evicting like 30 year residents um, who have rent control and turning that building into like a profit making machine for people from 
downtown or from different places that have no me. I think that activists now that I've talked to who are from Echo Park or Highland Park, mm-hmm. when they when they talk to us here in Boyle Heights, they say like you have to fight it like when you first see it like. You have to nip it in the bud because what happened there was that they were like, oh, by the time they realized that something was happening, it was too late. Like, Mm -hmm. their homes were unrecognizable, their neighborhoods were unrecognizable because it all happened so quickly because Mm -hmm. it's capitalism, you know? It's like, it's like a machine. It's just like devouring everything in its sight. So when they talk to us, they're like, we have your back. Um... You need to fight it now, and you're doing a really good job of like fighting it now, but just like be very vigilant. The Holland's building MAGA referred to is a building off of Whittier Boulevard in East Los Angeles. Rents have risen by a ridiculous amount, causing eviction to many of the tenants. The rise in rents is likely being caused by the renovation of the 6th Street Bridge, which is nearby. <laughs> Maria, a shop owner who has a market in the Holland's building, shares her story. She discusses how the new owner of the building, Brian Newman, would always enter the building unannounced. Since January, Newman would bring in groups of people into the shop and show them around. On April 25th of this year, she brought in a group of people that seemed interested in buying the place. After 30 minutes of walking around, he gave her an eviction notice that stated she had to leave in 30 days. Unable to read English, she asked for help. After finding about the eviction, it seemed unfair that the owner was able to do this. The eviction would leave Maria without her shop and a home. In response to the injustice, the community organized itself on May 20th to protest against the unfair evictions of the Hollands building. Outside of the building, community members held up signs that let people know that they were here to stay. The chants of the community yelled out that even though they were being forced to leave, the community was not going anywhere. Strong community organization such as this is the key in fighting gentrification. As their chants say, a united peoples will never be defeated. Since the day of the protest, one of the families living in the building was able to successfully fight their eviction case. Although this victory is great, there are many victims who are being forced out of their homes because of gentrification. The neighborhood of Lincoln Heights needs to follow the example of the Hollands building and organize themselves as gentrification newly arises. Being informed of your rights and coming together as a community will help make sure citizens are being given a fair chance at life. Let them know you won't go anywhere. Let them know that LA is going to stay.